you so very much for attending this book reading of my novel, Frankenstein. My name is Mary Shelley, and I am 25 years old. Six years ago, in the year 1818, when I was 19 years old, Frankenstein was first published. In honor of this tremendous success of the first play production that will be in London later this year, I have decided to go back through my life and to answer the frequent question of how I, then a young girl of 19, came to think of and to dilate upon so very hideous an idea such as Frankenstein. I suppose the only possible answer that could be sufficient would be that my whole life contributed to and influenced the making of Frankenstein. I was born on August 30th, 1797, in London, England, to William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. My parents were both famous writers and well known for their radical beliefs. Unfortunately, 11 days after I was born, my mother died of a fever that she developed after childbirth. My, fa my father became my primary caretaker, but I had no formal schooling as a child. Instead, I read what I wished and learned from the famous authors and intellectuals that were often at my home. To escape from the tensions and of my life and my family, I would often write stories. Thinking back, I never made myself the heroine of my tales. Life seemed too commonplace in affair with regard to myself. I could not figure that, that romantic woes or wonderful events would ever be my lot. I, but I did not restrict myself to my own identity, and I could people the hours with creations far more interesting <coughs> at that age than my own sensations. Although there were many famous authors and intellectuals that would come and visit my father, I will never forget the first night I met Percy Bicey Shelley. It was the year 1812, and he had come to dinner to discuss politics with my father. I was only 14 years old at the time, but he still had a profound effect on me, and eventually my life. Well, unfortunately, he was married to Harriet Westbrook Shelley, and so I did not see Percy again until 1814, when I was 16 and he was 21. Of course, we fell in love and decided to run away to Europe to be together. Our first child, my first child with Percy was born on February 1815, but unfortunately, she died a few years soon after. I never really got over her death, and it often haunted me and I dreamed about her because I figured that her death could have been prevented in some way. But the summer of 1816, Percy and I rented a house in Lake Geneva, Switzerland, called Villa Diodati, with Lord, our friend Lord Byron. <coughs> we, the, the weather was very wet that summer, therefore we spent a considerable amount of our time indoors, reading ghost stories and discussing various philosophical doctrines. Then one night, Lord Byron propose that we each create our own ghost story. Well, of course, I busied myself to think of a story, one which would speak to the mysterious fears of our nature and awaken thrilling horror, <coughs> one which would make the reader dread to the ground, to curdle the blood, and to quicken the beatings of the heart. Then one, night, one day, we were talking about galvanism and whether a corpse could be brought back to life. That night, I did not sleep, nor, could I, nor did I dream. My imagination, unbidden, possessed and guided me, lifting, my, lifting me above the successive images that arose in my mind that were far above the usual bounds of reverie. I saw a pale, the pale, unhallowed student kneeling beside the thing he had put together. I saw the hideous phantasm of a man stretched out and on the workings of some powerful engine stirred with an uneasy, half vital motion. At that moment, I knew I had found my ghost story. And so I began in my transcript with the words, it began on a dreary night of November. Looking back, I can still see my ghost story, or my dream. I see the very room, the dark parquet, the moonlight struggling through the shutters, and the sense I had that the white high Alps were just beyond. I, I thought my story would only be a few short pages, but Percy urged me to develop the idea at a greater length. Well, I do not owe one incident of 
one, I do not overlook the suggestion of one incident or the train of feeling to Percy, but without his incitement, I would never, Frankenstein would never have made to the form in which it was presented to the world. I decided to dedicate my novel to my father, William Godwin. Later on, despite the many deaths of, of many of my children, including one of my sons, William, and another new baby, Clara, I ardently worked on my novel. Frankenstein was published on March 11, 1818, when I was 19 years old. I, I got many different receptions from my novel, including one from the Edinburgh Review that stated that taste and judgment alike revolted at this kind of writing. But altogether, my novel was a huge success and continues to progress beyond anything I even imagined. And it is often a common misconception between people who have never read Frankenstein to think that the Frankenstein is the monster. Actually, Frankenstein is the person who created, the scientist who created a monster, literally and figuratively. The story begins with a man named Robert Walton who is bound is a captain of a ship bound for the North Pole. He he is recounting through his letters to his sister his adventures and what he encounters. He meets a man named Victor Frankenstein, and here's the fantastic story of the monster that he created. During Victor Frankenstein's early life, he was consumed by the desire to discover the secret of life and after several years of research is convinced that he has found it. So he spends months anxiously transforming a creature out of old body parts and making a, a creature. One day when the creature wakes up, he looks at the, monstros the monstrosity that he created and is horrified. Well, I will not give away any more because you will have to wait and see for yourself. But I will say this, that Frankenstein was the first true supernatural science fiction novel ever wrote. And I wanted to create a story that reflected the controversies of our time, such as what does it mean to be human? And how far can we go in tampering with nature? And what responsibilities do we have to each other? Frankenstein also portrays the belief that not all scientific advances are for the good of mankind, and that some even go against um, nature. This is also shown through the experiment when they made Frankenstein, because they made a monster, but could find no place for it to live in the world. Last year, my husband, Percy Shelley, drowned while sailing. And I did not think I could come here today and read this novel to you, because in every way it reminds me of him. But I realize that I have an affection for it, for it's the offspring of happy days, days in which grief and death were but words that had no true echo in my heart. But these several pages speak of many a walk, many a conversation, and many a drive when I was not alone. And my companion was one who, in this lifetime, I will never see more. But despite that, I know that to keep Percy's memory alive, I must go on with my life. And so today, I propose that this book reading is in honor of Percy Shelley. Because without him, Frankenstein and I would not be who we are or where we are today. And so on that note, I shall begin with the first letter. To Mr. Ville, England. You will rejoice to hear that no disaster has accompanied the commencement of an enterprise which you have regarded with such evil forebodings. I arrived here yesterday, and my first task is to assure my dear sister of my welfare and increasing confidence in the success of my own. 